Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve valid Sudoku. So our job is to determine if a 9x9 Sudoku board is valid, and only the filled cells need to be validated according to the following rules. So basically, each row, column, and the 9 3x3 subboxes of the grid, they must contain the digits 1 to 9 without any repetition. And these notes are extremely important. A Sudoku board which is partially filled, it might be valid, our job is to validate it, but it's not necessarily solvable, so that doesn't matter. And only the filled cells need to be validated. Okay, so what this means here is a board will look like this. It's partially filled and we're not worried about the fact that this is missing items. Okay, we just need to say so far, is it currently valid? And yes, this one actually is. We return true here in each of these nine boxes here. There's no duplicates in each row. There's no duplicates and in each column, there's no duplicates. And you really just care about if there's duplicates because you'll actually see that we're guaranteed each board at I, J is a digit digit one to nine, or it's period saying that it's nothing, you're guaranteed that the stuff in the board is actually what you want. It's just you need to make sure there's no duplicates. So we're going to break this into three different parts. We're going to validate the rows, the columns, and we're going to validate the boxes. As you might guess, validating the boxes is easily the hardest part, although it's really not too bad. Now, firstly, how would we detect duplicates? What data structure is good for that? Well, since we're actually guaranteed that the board is very small, it doesn't really matter what data structure you use. But in general, you would want to use a set because you have O of 1 lookup for finding if there is a duplicate or not. So we're going to use a set. So we know that the board is nine by nine. So we'll just do for I in the range of nine. And then this is going to send us through the rows. So this is going to basically say, okay, this is the first row, second row, third row, and so on. Now we actually need to check each row. And so we need a set, at least a default set S for every single row, okay? Because when you hit a new row, you want to use a new set to make sure there's no duplicates there. So we'll make an empty set. And then we'll say for J in the range of nine, I is going to go over the rows, J will go over the columns. So we'll see every single board position here, one row at a time. We'll say that the item we're looking at is the board at I, J. And then, hey, if the item is in the set S already, well, then we can immediately return false because that means you had a duplicate. Now, otherwise, if the item is not a period because you don't want the period in the set, we don't want to put that into the set, we want to just ignore it, you want to S dot add the item. And that's really the trick for all of these. In fact, I'm actually just going to copy and paste this for the columns because it's extremely similar, okay? You would say for I in the range of nine and for J in the range of nine, you access the item as board IJ. But we can actually just access board JI. Effectively, you look at one column at a time. Now the boxes, there's different ways to do this, but I feel like the most intuitive way is to have a nested for loop for each of the starting positions. So here a box is basically this stuff. And so there's always this starting position of the box box, which is the top left. Here, this is zero, zero. If we go over three, it's going to be zero, three. If we go over here, zero, six. And then if you go down three rows, it's going to be three, zero, three, three, and three, six, six, zero, six, three, and six, six. Okay, so we're actually just going to get those, we'll say starts is equal to the list of all of those positions. Okay, so now we have the starting positions, but we need to keep running this loop that uses the start position, and it's going to go over just the position of the box. We'll say for I and J in the starts. Now we need to do this loop to go over the box, which is why we need our set here. So we get S is equal to our set. We'll do for row in the range of what well, we want to start at I and we want to go until just I plus three. Okay, remember this is always exclusive. It's going to do whatever I is and then the next two indices after that. And for call in the range of J to J plus three. Now we can do exactly the same code, except we get item is equal to the board of each row and column. If the item is in the set already, we know we can immediately return false. Otherwise, as long as that item is not equal to a period, then we can just add that item into the set. At the end of this, we are going to return true because we have passed all the checks, therefore it is valid. And if we run this, it is going to work. Okay, so the time complexity of this algorithm is technically constant because you are guaranteed that the board is nine by nine and the space complexity is also guaranteed to be constant 
client as well. However, if you were to kind of lax this a little bit, there's no reason that this couldn't work for bigger values. Now it's probably still going to be a square grid. So really you'd argue this is more like O of N squared. That just means all of the positions, we're going to see all those positions many times. When we check each of the rows, our set will store at most N things. When we check the columns, our set will store at most N things. And even when we check the boxes, those are still going to store N things. This is nine things as well. Okay. So we would say that this space complexity is more like O of N. I hope this was helpful guys. Drop a like if it was and have a great day.